Hi, Nathan here. Welcome to the Game Pass review series. We now be going through the Game Pass library, selecting the game and reviewing it. If you have any Game Pass games you would like me to review next in the next Game Pass video, please let me know in the comments below. With that being said, this is my review of Hellblade Senua Sacrifice. Which lies the halls of hell, the place they call Hellheim. Hellblade is a title made by Ninja Fury, who are mostly known for the likes of Heavenly Sword and the rebooted Devil May Cry. When this game was in development it was described as an independent AAA title, with around 20 developers on the team. In Hellblade you play as Senua, a very troubled warrior dealing with severe mental health issues and psychosis. The game starts you off on a boat travelling to Helheim in order to save a loved one's lost soul. As you dive deep into Helheim, stories from Senua's past constantly come into play revealing more secrets as the story unfolds. With this being a very story driven title I've gone out my way to not spell the game. The story takes many twists and turns keeping you guessing and wondering what's next. Just before you start the game a message from Ninja Fairy pops up informing you several people with mental health and psychosis helped assist with making this title. It also recommends you play with a headset throughout the game. I soon came to realise that the psychosis aspect wasn't just part of Hellblade, it's the core of the whole game that ties it together. It's a sensitive matter that is treated with a lot of care and respect. What is she doing? Why is she doing this? Why doesn't she turn back? She's doing this for him. She wants to rescue him. He's already dead. I found the audio to be nothing short of outstanding. You are overwhelmed with multiple voices which will negatively laugh, mock, question, everything you do. This is when you start to see the struggles that Senor must deal with daily. It gives you a bit of an idea of what it's like to try and concentrate and focus while constantly being talked down to about how you're not good enough. One of the voices seems to narrate key parts of the story which was a nice touch keeping you engaged with the story but adding even more to the overall title's theme. This voice also talks to you even going as far as to ask the player rhetorical questions. You will also begin to hear very disturbing noises and sounds that help create a very uncomfortable atmosphere. It does a good job of balancing real life traumas while still maintaining great gameplay mechanics that you would expect from a video game. Hellblade was released back in August 2017 and the visuals still hold up to games today. Inspired by North mythology and Celtic culture, you will find lore stones that work as collectibles hidden around Helheim. Finding one of these allows you to listen to stories told by Senua's friend Druv about the lore of the North Gods and the North Men. It's a nice detail and something that made me want to find and listen to them all. The Northmen say that at Ragnarok, the sons of Muspel will travel to battle in the ship called Nagel. A few hours in, you will come to realise not everything you see is as it seems. Blurring the lines of reality and hallucinations, it really makes you guess what's real or not. A lot of disoriented visuals can disrupt your playthrough or make certain tasks more confusing and challenging. It does a great job of imposing dangers and threats that some of the psychosis will have to overcome. Just like the audio, it helped tell a more detailed story of the eyes of Senor, creating some unique set pieces that are simultaneously wonderful and horrible, there are a lot to play with here. Ninja Fairy utilises a lot of its visuals in many clever ways that separates it from any title I've ever played. The best way to describe Hellblade is an action puzzle adventure game. The action side of things comes down to a hack and slash style playing similar to other games like God of War and Devil May Cry, but unlike them games, the intriguing part of the combat isn't a high score system or a cool cinematic final blow, Hellblade takes a slower approach, making you prioritise defensive options more, picking the right time to attack that won't leave you vulnerable is key. You don't gain any new moves or attacks, 
Everything you have at the start is what you come out with by the end of the game. You can dodge and parry to open up enemies and attack with light and heavy blows which have a great feel and weight to them. Don't let them get behind you. Keep them in sight. The difficulty comes from multiple crowded enemies at once. With it not being a top down camera view you won't see enemies that are beside or behind you. Being aware of your position is important for survival. Even the voices in your head will alert you when you're being attacked or off screen. The combat is simple yet fun, never takes away from the more important matters this game strives in. <laughs> Something that will have split opinions is seeing you being affected by the start of the game. Displaying a dark rot in your hand, every time you die it will travel up your arm and if it reaches your head it will delete your whole save progress. Personally, I like the idea, it added more pressure and excite it. It's easy for me to say this though, as it never happened to me and I might not have been so kind if it did. When you're not slaying demons, you must solve several puzzles or tasks to progress such as finding the light before Senua gets overwhelmed, sometimes having to find hidden paths to ensure the correct pathway is bright enough that can be used as safe zones. The most common one you face is finding symbols to open main gates. Standing at the right spot or height to manipulate the environment to create patterns can be fun at first, but these kind of puzzles occur far too often. By the end of the game, it started to hinder my experience. There's a handful of boss fights that will ask you to change things up a bit from your usual demons. Learning the timing for parries and dodges is more important with fights lasting a lot longer for you to survive. Each of these boss encounters have their own gimmick that plays against Senua's paranoia, giving you an even bigger sense of achievement when you beat them, with one of them being my favourite standout moment of the entire game. That is why the With way too many repetitive puzzles that will need to be addressed in the sequel, Hellblade is superb at handling a serious real life matter into an action adventure game. Going through the game with Senora helps us understand something that so many people struggle with around the world. Take it. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. I would love to give this title a download now badge, but I can't. This game is very different to Ninja Theory's past titles. A lot of what makes this game so great isn't going to sit well with some people. I would definitely say it's worth a download though. Have a play and see what you think. You might very well be surprised. If you enjoyed this video then please give our channel a subscribe or why not check out our other videos when we do podcasts and even more Game Pass reviews. With that being said, thank you for watching the video and GG's.